saying that whatever is being done is of the devil and is not of God when people are claiming that it's of God, you got to be make sure that you're right about that so that you're not in danger of, of doing what people, what the Pharisees were doing about Jesus Christ. Now, like I said before, I have zero doubt and no qualms about just publicly condemning the, the charismatic Pentecostal movement and their fake speaking in tongues because it literally is of the devil. And I believe that the people who are actually doing that, that aren't faking it, because most of them are faking it, you talk to people who come out of those movements and they're like, yeah, we, you know, they just want to do what other people are doing. They want to look spiritual too. And they fake it. And they, they work themselves up to try to get themselves in a state of mind to be able to, oh, I spoke in tongues too. But they have this culture that says, well, you know, basically they'll question your salvation if you're not speaking in tongues. I had people come up to me out soul winning before and say, well, so, but do you speak in tongues? You know, and they just want to sound all spiritual and holier than now and everything else. Because, well, I speak in tongues. Do you even speak in tongues? It's like I'm out preaching the gospel and they want to, you know, bring, bring that up and, and whatever. Right. So, but, you know, they believe you could lose your salvation. They believe a lot of other, you know, they basically believe a works based salvation, which is why we know for 100 percent for sure they're not of God. And if people aren't even saved, you know, they're not getting poured out this gift of the spirit that the Bible talks about. Now, in the book of Acts, in verse number four here, we'll just read starting verse number one. The Bible says, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. So this is obviously a very special event that's happening right here. And this is the first time that we see anybody receiving this gift of being able to speak with other tongues. So the church is kind of gathered together here in one place. All of a sudden there's this, this rushing, the sound of a rushing mighty wind, right? So it's kind of like the place that they're in is just um, obviously being, being, filled with that Holy Spirit and, and it sounds like this mighty wind coming in and then they see they appear cloven cloven means they're split like these split tongues that looks like fire and just kind of rests or sits on each of them I don't know exactly what that would look like I mean we this is this is the information that we have but it's it's kind of like maybe a I mean, uh, an apparition, sort of, like a, like a tongue that's split and, and fiery. I don't know. But uh, this, is, this is what we see happening here. And then it says in verse number four, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So what's happening here then is now they're able to speak with another tongue. And what is the Bible talking about when it says they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Look at verse number five. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. So in verse number four, it says they began to speak with other tongues. And in verse number six, it says every man heard them speak in his own language. And it takes very, very little knowledge and understanding to know that the word tongue means language. It's very commonly used even outside of the Bible, you know, I, I'm not going to spend my time just completely proving that, but we can see it clearly even in context here. When they were speaking with other tongues, people hear them in a language. So that's all it means. And it says in verse number seven, and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one another, behold, are not all these which speak Galilean? So why were people kind of freaked out? Like what in the world is going on? It's because everybody that was speaking with these other languages and people were hearing them speak in other languages, the people who are doing the speaking, they're all just from Galilee. They're all Galileans. And it said earlier in verse 5, there was dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. So every nation of the world is represented in Jerusalem at this time. And every nation, you know, different nations have different languages. And people, even the devout Jews, you know, they're living there. Many of them were probably raised in other countries, even though they're devout Jews. They, they make a trek back to worship at the day, you know, for Pentecost. 
but they're still spending their life and their time out there. And many of these Jews probably don't even speak Hebrew. Maybe they don't speak, you know, whatever language. We don't know what they, what they speak, but they know their own language. These people are starting to speak, regardless of how many languages they do speak. When the Spirit gave utterance to those that were given this gift of speaking with tongues, the people hearing them heard in their own language. Their own language, the language from their native tongue, where they were born, where they're from. They're starting to hear them speak and they're like, how do they know that language? Right? I mean, they're all just from here in Galilee. What, what are they, how is it that they know all these languages? So it was a miracle. They, they had no, and they didn't know, it's not that they all studied right before the day of Pentecost, right after Jesus resurrected and now they're going to learn all these languages. This is supernatural. That's why it talks about the cloven tongues resting upon them. And they were able to speak in language they didn't know. Verse number eight says, and how hear we every man in our own tongue? So again, verse six says they heard them in their own language. And then verse eight, we hear them in our own tongue. It's being used interchangeably. There's no, no difference there. But see, because we don't as commonly today say tongue, 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 we say language when we're referring to someone's language. It adds a little bit more of a mystery to it, to the ignorant, to the people who just don't know any better. So that way we say, oh, but do you speak in tongues? It's easier to get away with false doctrine with words that are not as commonly used today as they were back when the Bible was translated in English. So same thing with, um, you know, repent. It's just not as, as, as commonly used. And it's easier to get away with some false doctrine and add meaning to it or change meaning of it or whatever um, to try to redefine the word. Just like the people who believe in this, in, in the speaking of tongues, I'm talking about the Pentecostals with, the, with their literal babbling. That is not another language. It's just gibberish. It's nothing. And they'll claim it's just another language. We just don't know what the language is. I mean, I could stand up in here and go, oh, but you know, and just make a bunch of sounds and noises come out of my mouth. And be like, Pastor Burgess, that's not a real language. I'm like, yes, it is. You just don't know it. 